Lady Grey 312 says uh, oh, monopolies are the root of all evil. And this is from Make It Pop in response to your defunding of uh, organizations extraneous to the US, I expect. Would you include Israel in this defunding uh, tenure that you discussed with regard to the WHO? If you would end the war between Ukraine and Russia or at least stop funding it, what would you do about uh, America's ongoing funding of Israel? To be clear, I would end the war in Ukraine and Russia. It's not that I would just stop defunding it. I would negotiate a deal, and I, I just want to quickly hit this because it's probably the most important point that we haven't touched. The deal I would negotiate is freeze the current lines of control, make a hard commitment that NATO will not admit Ukraine to NATO, but in return, pull Russia out of its military alliance with China. Okay, that's actually the, the top threat that we would face is a Russia-China alliance, and we're driving Russia further into China's arms. That's also how we deter China from going after Taiwan without going to war over it. Because China's bet right now is if Russia's in its camp, the U.S. will be in a tough position. If Russia's not in China's camp, Xi Jinping has to think twice before going after Taiwan. So a lot there. I can dive deeper on that if others are interested. But it is a super important plank of my foreign policy vision, which is based on a modern Monroe doctrine, which is to say that where we spend our money is you don't mess with the United States of America on our own soil with Chinese spy balloons or spy bases in Cuba or pumping intentionally, you know, violence into our country across our southern border. No, you don't mess with us. Now, as that relates to Israel, my view is I ask the question, there's no North Star commitment to any one country other than the United States of America. So what advances American interests? I actually do think our relationship with Israel has advanced American interests. I come out on the side of that. Here's what I want to see happen, though. I want to negotiate. I'm a deal maker. OK, I want to negotiate now Abraham Accords 2.0. Get Saudi, Oman, Qatar, Indonesia in there. Get Israel on its own two feet. And I believe in standing by commitments that we've already made. So our commitments have, I think, thirty eight billion dollars in aid, military support, et cetera, going in through 2028. I want to get Israel to the place where it is negotiated back into the infrastructure of the rest of the Middle East, we should not be worried about holding one nation or one region hostage over one particular question relating to Palestine. Go to Abraham Accords 2.0. That's good for Israel. It's good for the rest of the Middle East. It's good for us, such that come 2028, that additional aid won't be necessary in order to still have the kind of stability that we'd actually have in the Middle East by having Israel more integrated in with its partners. And I think that the Trump administration took a first step getting Bahrain and some other countries. I think we need Saudi. I think we need Oman, Qatar, Indonesia, and others in there. And then I think that puts us in a position, it's everybody's position to say we don't have to meddle.